and summarily said no to each and every suitor, causing the price to plummet each time. We ultimately sold the company in the courthouse steps bankruptcy sale, December 6, 2002, for $10.5 million, which was not enough to get the bank out whole, much less the other unsecured vendors. My family received zero, nothing. We were in bankruptcy, and there was no one there to bail us out. Summit Electric was the lucky purchaser. For $10.5 million, they got a really good deal. They just didn't get the Rockwell franchise. The fight to save the company from bankruptcy had been long and progressed at a feverish speed, and believe it or not, even after the sale, it wasn't over. The estate of Warren Electric in bankruptcy filed a lawsuit against Rockwell for causing the bankruptcy. That's drug out six years. Late last year, the U.S. trustee was successful and Rockwell settled out of court. My family received a little pittance check, but everybody else was taken care of, and I was vindicated. <laughs> I relied and rested on my faith and my sense of humor to get me through the valley of death. I keep a plaque on my wall that says, the only thing more overrated than natural childbirth is the joy of owning your own business. <laughs> so what have I learned through my shadowy death valleys and my marvelous mountaintops, my crises and successes while living out my life's philosophy, life is 10% what happens to me and 90% what my Lord and I do with it? Mm -hmm. Four leadership lessons I've experienced and learned. I've learned early in my life that God is there to redeem us, even, even if the mess we're in is one we've made ourselves. I think about this when I look back to 1969 when I was 18 and a senior in high school, pregnant and unmarried. It's a tough predicament to be in today, but can you imagine 40 years ago, especially when I was an only child of older parents and my parents were respected pillars in the community and in the Southern Baptist Convention. There was pressure on me to have an abortion and it came from people I would never have imagined would give me that advice, the pastor of my childhood church and my own father to end the pregnancy, to get on with my life so as not to embarrass my parents. I just knew I couldn't do that. I felt the hand of God leading me to decide to have the baby. And no matter how uncomfortable and awkward things were, I've never regretted it. At the time, I didn't know how things would turn out. For a young teenage girl, that was my very first very dark valley. But I just knew God was in charge. In Genesis 50:20, when Joseph is talking to his brothers, and he says, Don't be afraid. What you intended for evil, God intended for good. <coughs> you see, Jesus knew what I know now. <laughs> Joseph, pardon me, knew what I know now. That our God is a give a second chance God. Sure, being unmarried, pregnant at 18 was tough. But God was there with me the whole way and was able to redeem that situation. And I wouldn't give anything in the world for my son John or for the joy of being his mother. Now, John worked for our family business until we sold the company, and then he felt God's calling to become a minister. He's been the children's director at Powerhouse Christian Center in Katy, and after becoming ordained, he has been called to create his own ministry, American Faith and Family Ministries. John has brought many people to Christ. He's a superb husband and a father of four. He's a wonderful Christian man, and I love him, and I'm very proud of him. <clears throat> He texts me about once a month, too, and says, thank you for choosing life 40 years ago. <laughs> I'm thankful that God allowed me the opportunity to be John's mother and be part of God's plan for his life. Number one, God is there to redeem us. <coughs> Pardon me. Can I have a glass of water? John, I think there's one in, in the room and they're on the table. God is faithful. God is there to... Never mind. Thank you. Okay. I can do this. God is there to redeem us. Number two, God is faithful. God is there to comfort us. When the mess that we're in comes because people we trust betray us. It's hard enough to deal with the consequences of our own missteps, miscalculations, and stupid mistakes. But it seems unbearable to suffer the consequences of something that wasn't our fault or that we didn't deserve. In 1985, I was married for the third time. <coughs> Pardon me raising two children, working part-time at Warren Electric. Then one perfectly suburban housewife day, it seemed like my whole life started falling apart. Husband number three came home to announce to me that he was having an affair. Correction, make that affairs. Where he also worked with the women at Warren Electric. 
And he threatened me physically, if I said a word about it, to my father, and told me there was nothing I could do about it. Now that's pressure. I'd like to say I was strong and true to myself and told the bum to get out, but I didn't. All I could think about is I couldn't go through another divorce. I mean, you know, three strikes and you're out, three marriages, two kids, no one else would want me. Or at least that's what he kept telling me and I kept believing. I can handle a lot of things, but the pain of betrayal was more than I could bear, so I took to my bed, literally staying in a fetal position for weeks. I couldn't stop crying. I'd lost all hope, and my faith had flown out the window. And then God broke through. Now you're going to laugh, <coughs> pardon me, when I tell you how it happened, but that's okay, because I think God has a great sense of humor. <laughs> there I was, lying on my bed, seeing no way out, feeling terribly betrayed and alone, when something on TV caught my eye. It was Tammy Faye Baker, <laughs> crying about who knows what, with all that makeup just running down her face, that mascara. And I just happened to look over and look in my mirror, and there I was, and I had makeup and mascara running down my face. It doesn't matter what you think about Tammy Faye. All I can say is at that moment, something inside me clicked, and I felt my faith and hope returning. It was as if God had breathed a new life into me. I grabbed God's outstretched hand, got up out of bed, got a renewed attitude, and got on with my life. I discovered that day that God uses all kinds of avenues to break through. Laughter, one line in a sermon, words of a song, smile from a stranger. He uses his whole creation to reach out to us. And two weeks later, as I was walking through that shadowy valley, still reeling with the Shock of number three's unfaithfulness, but trying to decide what to do about it, my father suffered a serious stroke, and I added becoming his caregiver to my already full plate. My mother was in total denial of his health needs, and hubby number three was no help at all. But because I felt the hand of God firmly holding my own, I realized I could, with his help, take care of my family, my parents, and myself, and the words of Philippians 4.13 became very real to me. I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me strength. And by the way, when I divorced number three, I thought I'd never find love again. I'd had three chances, in my opinion, failed at each. Was resigned to spending the rest of my life single. But God is generous and gracious. And I'm very happy to report that husband number four and the last one. John Draper and I have been happily married nearly 18 years now. God gifted me Johnny for comfort and support. And I have been asked why I feel this marriage is different than any of the three before. And I'll tell you why. Because our marriage has three in it. Johnny, myself, and Jesus. And I don't know what I've done without both of them. God is there to 